Senator Reid. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your distinguished service. Uh, Senator Brown brought up in his comments your February 6th town hall where you made it clear that uh, we have to work to make prosperity more dispersed throughout the society. He also indicated that many of the policies are beyond the purview of the Federal Reserve, but most of them are clearly in the purview of Congress. So I, if you could just give us one or two, th well, your, your top three issues that we have to deal with or can deal with to make equality um, much more uh, realized in this country. Um, Senator, I, I, uh, I'll go back again to labor force participation, which is just a, it's a big win for the overall economy, and it's also uh, the, the people who are, are not taking part in the labor force are, by and large, the, the less well-educated um, and less skilled and or people who may be uh, in, in areas that where, where opioids are, are prevalent and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I think a bipartisan focus, a focus on, on labor force particip participation would bring in mm -hmm. a lot of policies that would help deal with, you know, what I see as the problems, which are, you know, sort of relatively stagnant um, growth in incomes, in median incomes, and also relatively low mobility. Education, of course, would be at the top of, of every list, I think, uh, in, in addressing these issues as well. And this would cause, uh, this would require resources that we would have to commit. And I think you're aware we're on the uh, cusp of another <clears throat> debate about sequestration and the share of resources to defense and non-defense. And in fact, we're looking at very draconian numbers in terms of the situation at the BCA. But you would argue that we do have an obligation to make a significant investment in domestic programs in order to provide for this equality? I, I think that it's, I think it's, would be great for our country and for our economy if we could if we could address these these issues. Um, I, of course, easy for me to say. I don't have to find the resources. Um, thank you. Uh, let me just turn to another topic, which is I'm in, uh, very much involved with the Military Lending Act. As you know, it puts a 36 percent cap on <clears throat> interest rates to be charged to men and women in the uniform of the United States. Uh, the Federal Reserve is one of the independent um, regulators charged with its uh, enforcement. Unfortunately, what we've seen from the CFPB particularly is a retreat. Um, they're no longer supervising uh, this, they're no longer using this in their supervisory activities. They'll enforce a complaint, but the complaints are seldom made. Most young soldiers don't even realize, or sailors, Marines, that they, they have this ability to complain. Uh, we're looking at DOD and OMB uh, exempting an insurance product for auto dealers, which might result in interest payments far in excess of 36 percent. Can you commit to your continued strong and uh, persistent enforcement to the letter of the Military Lending Act? Yes, we, it'll be a priority for us. I thank, commit to that. Thank you very much. There's another issue, too, that I think uh, you've touched upon, and that is cybersecurity. It seems to be the ubiquitous complaint of everyone, not just in the financial sector, but every sector. And it seems to me, too, that um, typically those who are going to exploit cyber look for the back door, not the front door. They look for the, the small institution, <clears throat> not the, the big Wall Street bank that's spending $200 million a year on cyber protections. How are you dealing with that? How are you and your colleagues dealing with that, going out and making sure that community banks, that other smaller institutions that might be more vulnerable are taking the appropriate steps. Is that part of your inspected procedures? Are you looking closely at cybersecurity? Yes, we are. And um, it's hard because, uh, of course, the big banks are attacked too, but they have the resources to, to deal with it. And so we deal through FIFIAC, you know, the, um, which is the body of the regulators to promulgate right. guidance. We supervise for that guidance. And with the smaller banks, um, it's very important. And that is, uh, you know, that is a way that um, we see that as a real vulnerability for, for example, for the payment system. But we've also got to be mindful of the burden on smaller banks. But it is something we're very focused on. Are you focused to the extent of, of conducting, you know, red, red on blue exercises, i.e., you know, seeing what's working out there, seeing where all the connectivity exists or doesn't exist? Are you doing that or, or getting any access to organizations that are doing that? We do um, tabletop exercises, let's say, and these are led by the Treasury Department. This has been a, a major focus for, for Treasury, mm -hmm. and uh, appropriately so, and we take part in them. 
there is always the feeling with cyber that you're just not doing enough, right? Right. right. Well, in, in fact, that feeling is justified. <laughs> no, it probably is. 